I'd like to make a reference to, to politicians. We all like to claim iconic figures as our own. And since we're near sure, uh, Rabbi Burns. How would Robert Burns have voted if he was alive today? Every party would claim him as their own in, in Scotland. So Conservatives could say, well, he was an excise man. He was loyal to the Queen, therefore he was a Conservative. The Labour Party might say, well, he cared. He was a socialist, a man's a man for all that. He was clearly of Labour orientation. Nationalists would say, Scots were hey, tree of liberty. He was clearly a nationalist. But in truth, he may not have voted for any of us. You see, Robert Burns was all things to all people, which proved beyond all reasonable doubt he was, in fact, a Liberal Democrat. <laughs> that joke doesn't go down quite so well now as it did uh, a few years ago before a certain party entered office. I want to share a personal journey. All, all my comments are entirely my own, not necessarily that of a uh, Scottish government. And for sure, some of it's not necessarily the message of Scottish government. I have no civil service uh, notes. Uh, the comments are entirely uh, my own. But it's a bit about a personal journey uh, of someone who went into to politics from community campaigns into party politics and went from a negative to a positive. Roughly at the same time as the party to which I belong, the SNP, went from negative uh, to positive. Election after election was fought on negative campaigning, one last heave, we'll do it, we'll make a better argument, our case is good. I'm not saying we were ever wrong, but it was a real important moment before 2007 when the party and the leadership and the membership and the candidates, yes, we changed to a more positive style of campaigning. And I suppose the theory is that if you have a positive versus a negative campaign anywhere in the world, the positive campaign will win. But that's not what we're used to. What we're used to is negative campaigning. And if you have two negative campaigns, it will be the most negative campaign that will win. But a better style of politics is one which presents hope, opportunity, and ideas. Now, I mentioned the personal reference. I went through that personal journey. I, the worst is always a convert, isn't it? This will never work. No, no, we need, to, we need to express the failures of the others. No. When I was converted to this positive campaign, it worked for me personally, as a way of life, as well now, as it happens as a government minister, as part of the Scottish Government. Appointed fairly quickly as a, an MSP. You might think I sound as if I've got a bit of an ego. Uh, bottom line, every politician has a bit of an ego uh, to varying uh, degrees. But before I was an MSP, uh, I was a council leader. Before that, I was a councillor. Elected at 21. Before that, I was a community campaigner. I would never have thought I would be a government minister, uh, frankly, and I am. Uh, Feel, feel, feel very privileged that I'm in that position because I can give, as they say, something back. But how do I know that I've made it, so to speak? <coughs> well, you see, the Scottish Government Cabinet was uh, recently in Shetland, uh, up north, and uh, I went ahead. I was doing work on my planning portfolio, Minister for Local Government and Planning, and I went ahead to do some government business. And transport being uh, as it was, it was a slight issue. So it was a big cabinet public events, a list of engagements, and I was giving a planning presentation, which I'm not going to give now, but it's very dramatic, civil servants come in and said, the First Minister needs to speak to you. So I had to leave, go out, everyone was, what's happening? Take the call, and the conversation went like this, which gives me authority. Mackay, says the First Minister. Yes, First Minister, of course, a conference call, there's civil servants on the line. Uh, there's problems with the transport for the Cabinet in Shetland. You're the only Minister on the island, you have the full responsibility of the Scottish Government today. You are the First Minister. And I thought, that's fantastic. I can feel the power rushing through my veins. <laughs> what will I do? First Minister, what's the first engagement I have to do? You have to go and meet the Shetland ponies that <laughs> featured in the advert <laughs> that's viewed by 600 million people across the world. That advert about the dancing Shetland ponies and the cardigans. Fantastic. What an engagement. Uh, fortunately, the rest of the government did arrive in good time and the cabinet meeting was held and we announced a Lerwick declaration, uh, declaration which is about empowering communities, recognising the differences across Scotland. And again, I was in a position where I did a lot of the preparation work for that to happen, for the First Minister but to be able to make uh, that statement. But you know, positive politics isn't about grandiose declarations or statements or as much as it can be philosophical, it's also very pragmatic. Because some of my most rewarding moments are not those where I've made, changed the law or policy. It's been when I've made the, the little difference in someone's life 
and they've told you about it, that you've changed an aspect of their life. Some person, uh, Ellen, um, told me I, I saved her life because she was suffering from antisocial behaviour and she thought nobody cared. I knew a guy, uh, Graham, who was uh, left the institution to live in the community with proper support. We thought he had a speech impediment, he never spoke. He had nothing to say. And when he opened up his opportunities in the community, he spoke and he was lively and he was vibrant. Or people I know that we've been able to help through local programs like diversionary schemes that I know has put them on, on a path it, for the better. And even at the most local level, folk will say to you as a politician, we're really bad for claiming credit for things we haven't done. But I know I did these things as an opposition councillor, a leader with the tools to do the job, the power, and then as a government minister. Not brandishing it with, with arrogance, but with opportunity. What can we change? Local examples, to make it more real uh, for me. Uh, parents wanted a play park. Council said no. So where is the money? The play park's there. Young people wanted a skate park. How much will it cost? £400,000. So we'll never achieve it. Well, it's there in Renfrew now. Housing, in Remshire Council where I led, had to meet housing requirements. Had to improve the quality of housing. They voted against housing stock transfer. Probably a wise choice. How do we fix it? Well, we put together the plan to make it happen. And if you walk down those streets now, you'll see the scaffolding with the work going on. These are material, these are assets, but it's been able to get things done. We make local human connections that can be, quite frankly, life-changing. So it's not about arguing in Parliament and who wins the debate. It's actually about getting things done. And that's what I like to be known for. He can get things done. And that might raise expectations uh, beyond what you can deliver, but always try to do your best. And uh, the only promise I've ever made is I will do my best. I never promise people things I can't deliver. And that's been uh, the way that I've operated. You might think that politics is about a social elite. Well, in Westminster, frankly, it is. There is a gender issue in politics. There is an issue about inequality. There is an issue about confidence. And a sneering look at the, the boy from the West Coast that's maybe got a slightly nerdy accent. You might have seen it if you watch Question Time. The comments about the boy that was from Glasgow and he didn't sound quite right, you know, people sneering and embarrassed by him. I visited a violence reduction unit this week to hear about a transformational change and how early intervention and those approaches work. And you hear really inspiring stories about the right intervention then inspiring uh, others. There was a boy, uh, came from quite a rough background, uh, domestic issues, not the greatest start in life. At the age of 13, he ended up uh, in a homeless person's unit with his mother and his brother, surrounded by poverty. That was me. That wasn't the inspirational people that I was talking to. So it filled me with a care about my community and an ambition and a fuel to go on and do things, which I'm very privileged uh, now to do, of course. But it's that positive approach. What kind of rules of life can we adopt? Avoid toxic people. I know it might mean cutting out some of your friends and family. But avoiding toxic people is uh, something I have found incredibly useful. You can't be so rude to say, I'm not talking to you anymore, you're a toxic person. But people are attracted to positive people, to people who have got a can-do approach, people who are compassionate, have empathy, enterprising, and of course in politics, uh, democratic too. And that's why I think the kind of decisions that politicians that care and want to make a difference will focus on that can-do culture, that pragmatic approach, and that life-changing approach. Focusing not just on the next election, but the next generation. That's why this government has put so much effort into preventative spending, early action. So the kind of things that will change society for the better. Not that government does things to people, but we set the conditions, the parameters within which I think we can be successful. And opportunity, jobs and education are, are crucial in that. And of course, it's the powers of a parliament. We can express what we are as a society. Free education, free personal care, a free NHS at the point of need. Those kind of social principles uh, can be preserved and progress with the parliament. And of course, I am from the political persuasion that wants to take the next step so that that parliament's powers are complete, so that we have a full toolbox to make the right decisions. You see, I fundamentally believe in people, and I believe in the people of Scotland. Wherever we're from, the people who live in Scotland are the people best placed to make all the decisions about our future. Who else is better placed to make the right decisions? And it's that sense of empowerment that I believe in. So I'm very privileged to be leading the Community Empowerment and Renewal Bill, which is not rhetorical claptrap about middle class people telling working class people how to live their lives. It's about giving a toolbox. It's about opening up opportunities. It's about transferring power, tipping the balance towards communities to access 
that which is already theirs. You see, it was Jimmy Reid who said, if you think the wealth of the North Sea is spectacular and grand, that is nothing compared to the untapped wealth, the resource of our people. And that's what we have to unlock, the potential of our people. And that's not a partisan politics. That's, that's a recognition uh, of, the, of the potential uh, that's there. So change is absolutely possible. I've seen it at a local level, and I've seen it at a parliamentary level, and from the ministerial point of view uh, as well. I should say, though, that when I went into the finance portfolio, reporting to Cabinet Secretary Mr Swinney, when I went in, I was filled with enthusiasm. I said, in the finance portfolio, I want something to do with growth. So they gave me the high hedges bill. <laughs> I wanted to do something on tax. So I got business rates, which is the most controversial uh, side of taxation. But something really inspiring I'm able to do at the moment, and that's the public sector reform. Because we know it's not always just about money, but money is an issue. But it's about reordering public services to focus on the kind of society that we want to build. I think we have to have a belief system. The best politicians, I think, are those who have a belief system. Not managerial politics. We can do it 2.4% better than you. We can give you 5.3 more than this. And, you know, that, that's not the best. But the politics that work best, I think, are the politics that are about people and are about an ideology, but can be adaptable, that's pragmatic. Consensual, not tribal. I was pretty tribal early on, but I've become more pragmatic over time, recognising not everything's black and white. Everything's on a scale, probably. And it's that, uh, that, that privileged position I have now to express some of that. And in through community planning, through public sector reform, some of it's structural change. We can make all the laws we want, and write all the regulations we like. It doesn't matter. It's the culture, it's the leadership, it's the can-do enabling environment that's created by our leaders in society, by communities and by politicians that will make the biggest difference, not make the, uh, the impact um, on uh, the ground. Unity of purpose is very important. Team approach, understanding each other's needs. I, mean, I hear stories about Westminster politicians and departments. It really is very departmentalized. But when you're focused on a purpose, then I think you'll get better outcomes, a team approach because you care about each other's needs uh, to achieve. So what is the government's purpose? We express it very clearly, sustainable economic growth, and then we have a range of outcomes uh, coming from that, and we all work towards that. And our civil servants and our teams and our stakeholders uh, work uh, towards that as well. And it's a very clear expression of what we're trying uh, to achieve. So understand your purpose. Have a belief system. Be positive and stay positive, because I think that that can absolutely to get things done. Because the biggest challenges we've got in Scotland, not necessarily a medical response, it's things like social cohesion, social connectedness, inequality, tackling uh, those issues through bringing communities uh, together. Early intervention, so we make the right interventions and the right spending now on preventative spending, uh, rather than simply fixes at the end, putting a plaster on the wound. Let's make the right decisions early, early on. And the government's taking a very strong approach on this which I think around particularly early years will frankly be life-changing and is leading many other parts of the world on this particular uh, agenda. We know we've got issues. People accuse the government of not being bold. We've tackled sectarianism and alcohol and other social issues. You can't accuse the government of not being bold, but being bold is good, uh, which takes me to the civil service advice notes, which normally, if a minister is being slightly radical, they'll say, that's bold, minister. Uh, the amber signs start to go when you hear a civil servant saying that's bold. But you know you're really in trouble when a civil servant says to you, that's courageous, <laughs> Minister. Uh, you're probably heading over the cliff. What I've found, though, is demand the impossible. Uh, George Bernard Shaw says, change in this world only happens because of the actions of unreasonable men. And I agree. Far too often we're told that, you know, wherever you work on your life and politics, we can't do that. We tried that before. It can't be done. Forget it. Progress and challenge. I ask civil servants to come to me, and if they're going to tell me no, they better have a good reason why. And of course, tell me what I need to hear. Not what I want to hear, but tell me what I need to hear. Because being able to challenge, uh, be supportive, mutual trust and respect will get the best results. I have seen the First Minister demand the impossible and get it, time after time. And I think that's a good way of doing business, because it does up the bar, raise the bar of what can be achieved to make the difference uh, that you want to make. That's 
you know, if there's a scale of confidence uh, uh, and arrogance, certainly confidence is about trying to get things done in the way you conduct your business. Treat people as you would be treated. All of that, absolutely. But demand the impossible. Focus on objectives and, ha and have a plan. But be adaptable um, is absolutely uh, what I've found. And successful people, whether it's business or industry or politics or in community, are those who can understand the needs of others. They are focused uh, and they can have that energy and that enthusiasm and be resilient uh, to, to barriers. And don't put barriers in your own way, of course. There'll be plenty of other folk to do that for you, to put barriers in your way. I have found that uh, that, that community I was raised in, that very strong women, I have to say, surrounded by very strong women, gave me a sense of community spirit that, that, that's carried on. I mean, I remember, um, I used to think it was normal for everyone to come into your house. My grandmother, everyone used to come into her house. I thought it was normal. Now you probably think she's a drug dealer. Why is there so many people going in her house? I thought it was normal. That was the kind of caring grandmother I had, maternal figure, the whole street knew her. I remember in Kirtland Uke when uh, a lady had lost her engagement ring in the street and the whole street was out looking for it. I like to think it was to help her find her engagement ring, not uh, for their own benefit. Or why did they get into politics at the age of 13? Because there was a huge campaign against a toxic waste incinerator, old school, old style, Toxic waste incinerator. My community at the age of 13, I became politically active. To become an MP? Nope. To become a councillor? Nope. Just because I realise politics affects your life. And that's been my uh, driver uh, ever since. So sense of community, family, uh, and something that gives you a purpose. And you can then lean on when you need it in the tough times and when you have the, the knockbacks. And if I didn't take every opportunity that was presented to me, and I could have missed my chance many, many times, but people push me on, you can do it, give it a go. I've taken every opportunity and I now enjoy that uh, success. Easy come, easy go. But I can point to the, the things that I believe and I know have changed. You see, someone told me, of all the things you've done, Derek, it doesn't matter. The statues will be there, you won't. The assets will be there, but you won't. People will move on. The king is dead, long live the king. But what people will remember is how you made them feel in politics, not what you've done. It's how you made them feel that's been so important, I think, to me. Sometimes we go at 100 miles an hour. We trample over other people's feelings to get things done. Just be conscious of that, that social feeling uh, around you. So my challenge, my question to you is, as a government, as a party, but as a, as a country, we should be ambitious, we should be positive, we should be caring, we should have a belief system. Not necessarily religious, of course. That's about how you see your society. I know what my purpose is. What's your purpose? Does it affect other people? And is it positive? And are you pursuing it? And I challenge you, pursue it. You'll either achieve or you'll become a, vex a vexatious complainer. And I won't talk to you. <laughs> but if you do achieve, you can do wonderful things. Thanks very much.